Our title today's Neville Goddard conversation, Law of Thought Transmission. In his book, Prayer, the Art of Believing, there's a chapter dedicated to this, Law of Thought Transmission. Now, as this video is being released, yesterday I would have arrived back from my trip to Los Angeles. And so I recorded this video well ahead of time, so I wouldn't have to carry with me my audio equipment. And so I want to share an experience actually in relation to this trip and connect it over to the law of thought transmission, which is the ability to communicate with each other via the subconscious mind. So I always say this, that everyone shows up in harmony and in contribution to my goals, my visions, my definite chief aims. And I show up to be in harmony and contribution to others' goals, visions, and definite chief aims. And it plays out with such vivid accuracy. For example, the week prior to going to Los Angeles, there's a place that I absolutely love to stay, which I'd mentioned in the last video. When I was in Los Angeles a lot, having the opportunity to work with the Abraham Group, I was staying at this place that I absolutely love by Redondo Beach. I found it on Airbnb. There were a couple of years where I was there most of the year. And about a year ago, I had a conversation with the guy that owns the place. And he mentioned to me that he found somebody to rent it out for a long-term deal. And she was staying there indefinitely. He enjoyed having her as a tenant. And so a week prior to going there, I said to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could stay there again? I absolutely love staying there. And it reminds me of the mornings where I used to go to Redondo Beach and run as part of my morning cardio I used to do at that time. And I used to listen to Earl Nightingale's Strangest Secret. So a few days later, after thinking that thought, it would be nice to stay at this place. I would really love to stay at this place. I was about to call someone, and then I noticed I received a phone call on my phone, and it was him. So I picked up the phone. And I'm like, hey, Richard, how's it going? And he's like, hey. Are you planning to come down to California? Because remember the woman that was staying at the place? She's actually leaving on the weekend. And I said, I'm going to be flying down there on the weekend. He's like, have you booked a place? I said, no, I didn't book a place yet. He's like, you can stay here. And he's like, I'll even give you a deal. And it was a great deal. So I said, yes, of course. I would love to stay there. And I find this is the case when I go to Los Angeles. For some reason, I get phone calls from friends and clients in Los Angeles. And they want to do in-person sessions or friends want to meet up the week prior, and I'm saying to myself, I never announced it anywhere. And so the owner of this place, he actually likes watching my videos, and he's a fan of Neville Goddard, made me think, did he manifest this? Because here's the thing about this. What I've realized is that it's all happening at the same time. What I imagine imagines me back. What I say I am to, they say I am to that as well. And it shows up as a harmonious theater in contribution to my goals, my visions, because I'm going there to do some things anyways in contribution to his goals and his visions. So I firmly believe, and I have had many of experiences like this in relation to thought transmission. Let's reflect upon these quotes here to further discuss. He says, a clear concept of the dual nature of man's consciousness must be the basis of all true prayer. Consciousness includes a subconscious as well as a conscious part. The infinitely greater part of consciousness lies below the sphere of objective consciousness. The subconscious is the most important part of consciousness, for it is the cause of voluntary action. The subconscious is what man is. The conscious is what man knows. The subconscious is that in which everything is known, in which everything is possible, to which everything goes, from which everything comes, which belongs to all, to which all have access. So the way I like to work with this is when I commit to a definite chief aim or vision in imagination, and my, goal, and my visions and my definite chief aims tend to evolve around the entrepreneurial space. And I see everything as in harmony and in contribution to my definite chief aim. And my definite chief aim as in harmony and in contribution to all areas of my life, which spans over to personal life, relationships, friendships. I see it all as a first class journey to destination, as I had learned from one of my mentors, which was the exact same experience that Neville had with his teacher, Abdullah where Neville wanted to get to the Barbados first class, but for some reason, he got the ticket for third class, and he approaches Abdullah, and Abdullah didn't want to hear it, and so Neville ended up going to Barbados first class. And that parallels one of my experiences from one of my mentors when I was in my 20s, in which he was talking about business models, and he said, how do you want to get to your destination? Do you want to get there in a Cadillac, or do you want to get there in, I don't remember what other car he mentioned, but it wasn't as premium as a Cadillac. 
And to me, that's symbolic of you can get to the destination, but you can also get there first class. And so this is my subconscious programming right now. I want to get to where I'm going, but I also want to get in my symbolic representation of first class. And to me, that was the place. And it ends up being in harmony and contribution to his goals and visions because it worked out so well for him. And it ends up being in contribution to mine. Now let's relate this over to thought transmission in relation to how he describes it in the book. He says, your consciousness is light reflected on the mirror of your mind and projected in space to the one whom you think. By mentally speaking to the subjective image in your mind, you cause the mirror of your mind to vibrate. Your vibrating mind modifies the light of consciousness reflected on it. The modified light of consciousness reaches the one toward whom it is directed and impringes on the mirror of his mind. It causes his mind to vibrate accordingly to the modification it undergoes. Thus, it reproduces in him what was mentally affirmed by you. Now, I have an assumption that any messages that I broadcast out via my subconscious mind are received by those that are in harmony and in contribution to my goals, my visions, my definite chief aim, and the message is in harmony and in contribution to their goals, their visions, their definite chief aim, because I want to do things in a fair win-win deal way in relation to the Dr. Millikan affirmation that Neville had brought up, which is, I have a lavish, steady, dependable income consistent with mutual integrity and benefit, which is related to Philippians 4.8, in which we discussed in Thursday's video. I'll put a link in the description to that as we reflected upon the work of Florence Scovel Shin. And that's how it plays out, my representation of first class. Each person has their own representation of first class. And as mentioned, as taught by Abdullah, we can get to the destination and we can also get there first class. Might as well get there first class. And so he says, distance, as it is cognized by your objective senses, does not exist for the subjective mind. Now, this is a beautiful thing because maybe a person might think, I got to make all these arrangements. I got to call the person up. I got to do all these things. Overthinking. I want it the way it is, and that's the way it's going to be. And actually, I noticed that I didn't demand it to be that way. I said, isn't it wonderful to have that experience? I'm saying subconsciously, that's my first class, and it externalized that way. He says, distance, as it is cognized by your objective senses, does not exist for the subjective mind. Time and space are conditions of thought. The imagination can transcend them and move in psychological time and space. Although physically separated from a place by thousands of miles, you can mentally live in the distant place as though it were here. Your imagination can easily transform winter into summer. And I would say this is true because those years that I was in L.A. during the winter, I had transformed the winter into a summer. So this is actually true. It says New York into Florida and so on. Whether the object of your desire be near or far, results will be the same. So as we've been discussing, all people show up to be in harmony and in contribution to our definite chief aims. That's what we want to continue to encourage. And we are also in harmony and in contribution to their definite chief aims. And by having these conversations, I seem to have more of a frequency of this happening. That's because through the repetition of studying this information and reflecting upon these reference experiences in relation to others, in relation to ourselves, this information goes onto the subconscious mind and then reality expresses again based on the theater that's going on within ourselves. That which we consciously and unconsciously say I am too. Consciously, I'm going to this destination. Unconsciously, I'm getting there first class. Because in the beginning, Neville had consciously decided that he wanted to go to Barbados first class. That's what he consciously said I am too. Then on the journey, he seemed to be unconsciously saying I am to third class. And Abdullah reminded him, first class. And so he ends up getting to the destination in his version of a flow-based way. He not only gets the destination, but he also gets their first class. This is why I recommend the subconscious mind work, because how many times on the journey to realizing our goals, our visions, our definite chief aims, are we settling for a third class version of the journey? Now, third class is symbolic. It means settling for less than what you truly want. First class is going for exactly what it is that you want. And the reality is we can not only get to the destination, but we can get there first class. And so I never want to forget this. And how I know if I'm forgetting this is if I'm not maintaining my feeling of flow or ecstatic. To me, ecstatic, the feeling of ecstatic, watch the video I did on it, is symbolic of my version of first class journey to the destination. 
As I maintained my feeling of ecstatic, I noticed more first-class-based imaginal scenes in my imagination and symbolic representations of it in the experiences that I have with others. Because I noticed that I have all these interesting experiences that when I have them, experiences with others, things that show up, symbolic representations of ecstatic. When they show up, I say, oh, that's ecstatic. Isn't that wonderful? And I'll say, oh, interesting. That's because I've been maintaining the ecstatic. So maintaining the feeling of ecstatic represents itself in that which we consciously and subconsciously desire, truly desire, because ecstatic is based on who we truly are, which is a representation of love. When a person experiences symbolic representations of love in their imagination, they feel ecstatic. And I would also say if a person doesn't visually see it, it's any five sensory in imagination or simply capturing the feeling of ecstatic in imagination. What would it be like if it was true? You could imagine a scene that would imply or feel it. And that is what we're saying I am too consciously. And as we continue to maintain that consciously, it represents itself as the outer aspects of life on the journey to the destination. And that becomes a person's subconscious way of being, facilitating a flow-based or first-class-based journey, whatever first-class means to you. You can listen to what I'm saying, and this is first-class, that's first-class, what someone else is saying. The reality is that first-class is an individualized experience. It's what you personally want, articulated by that experience Neville shared with Abdullah in representation to air travel. However, that's symbolic representation. That doesn't mean that if it was Neville's version of first class, that it has to be another person's version of first class. And so first class is what a person truly loves and what they desire. It's what they want. And we really can want and have a flow-based journey to the destination. And symbolic of that, a recent business deal, we decided that we're going to focus on a certain level of business goal, financial goal. And we both agreed upon that we're going to do this in a fun flow based way, because if we're not having fun, we're not in flow. I'm not going to do this deal. He's not going to do this deal. We're not going to do it. So over the years, I have not only decided that I wanted the deal, but I also wanted my first class representation of the journey to realizing the deal. Now reflect upon this in your life, whatever it means for you. You want to build a business. You want to have a career. You can enjoy the journey of cultivating the skill during the pathway of realizing that vision and enjoy it. Have fun doing it. Do it where you want to do, with who you want to do it with, how you want to do it with. And that's all based on what you unconsciously say I am too. So you'll discover this on your thinking patterns in relation to your day-to-day experience with people, environment, circumstance, information. And you can apply the revision process at the end of the night and see it for how it truly is, which are first-class representations of how you really want it to be on the journey. And you'll see that the journey transforms to be first-class to the destination as it did with Neville. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and further encourage this with an auto-suggestion. You can say that through the power of thought transmission, I have the ability to bring forth those that are in harmony and in contribution to my goals, my visions, my definite chief aims, as I am in harmony and in contribution to their goals, their visions, their definite chief aims. I represent a loving flow-based journey to the destination, which is my version of first class, which represents itself each day upon reflection of my experiences and revising it in relation to what is pure, lovely, honest, just, and true in relation to how I truly am, which is a representation of love, a first-class journey to my destination. I recognize that everything I touch turns to first class. I am a symbolic representation of first class. Thus, I experience my relationships playing out in a symbolic first-class way in mutual harmony and contribution to the great work. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.